mindset. Small business owners seem to be completely obsessed with mindset. All the gurus out there are talking about mindset. What is it? Why is it important? And what goes wrong when you get it wrong? That's what we're going to be talking about this week. So we all hear about mindset all the time. It's something that all the gurus and coaches out there are talking about. But what is it? Why is it important? And what happens when you get it wrong? I'm talking today with Ryan Gray from Argonix. And he was just telling me how, shall I do a spoiler alert? Mindset is really important because you made your first million in your 20s and then blew it. <laughs> so what happened there, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I started a fairly successful uh, web design company uh, back in 2004. And that has continued through uh, all, like, all the way through for the last 17 years in one form or another. Uh, but I didn't make my first million from that web design company, which, you know, at the time, you know, all you had to do was have a website, put it on uh, a couple of directories, and you were ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Google would index you and you'd get a ton of, of new business, which is, you know, it was phenomenal for, for the time. Uh, but what I found was, I wasn't keeping any of the money that I was actually making. And so I was, I was <laughs> spending it on, spending, come on, cars, I was boats. spending it on staff. I was spending it on, on myself. Yes. Um, on, <laughs> on experiences. I was expending. Yes. Yeah. I, I was spending it pretty much wh wherever, you know, I could, I just had zero mindset mm. around keeping money. I could make mm. it for sure, but trying to actually keep it, that was a whole other scenario and, and business was demanding at the time. And so, you know, the like and as you know growth is expensive so i was reinvesting back into the business uh, that that was a large portion of it but i wasn't i guess doing that in a way that was profitable and mm -hmm. so it really took me until my early 30s to figure out what you know what like there's something broken and and i think it's with me i don't think it's with my marketing skill or my business skill or or that kind of thing i actually think it's it's internal and so i got a coach and he said he was a, a performance coach and he said, hey, look, you know, you really need to work on your, your money mindset. And he introduced me to a book uh, by T. Half Ecker called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And I realized that I had a money thermostat, um, sort of like, you know, when you, when you open a window and the, the, the thermostat is set at a certain level, um, it'll kick in and, and increase the, uh, you know, the temperature to meet the changing conditions. And so my, my money thermostat at a personal level was set very, very low. And so if I made money, so I'd common, spend it, it, I'd lose it's it. So yeah. yeah. Um, and so I had to work on that. And yeah, there were, there were a lot of interesting things that, uh, that I had to do or tried and tested. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, you know, affirmations I tried that didn't work. Um, you know, I tried, you know, all sorts of, you know, uh, tr the secret, you know, that, that sort of thing that didn't work. Um, you know, and, I'll, and so I eventually found that um, I was lying to myself through these affirmations, through, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, activities, I guess, that, that were popular at, at the time. Uh, and the thing that I did find that worked, though, was uh, changing it from, you know, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, I'm, you know, I'm good at money because I clearly wasn't. Um, it was a case of, OK, great, I will I will get good at money. I will uh, become wealthy. I will provide for my family consistently and at a level. Uh, so. It was it was a, a case of taking it from a, a an untruth to a truth, from from a lie to something that you know I could actually genuinely deep down grab onto and go, do you know what? This is actually real, and I won't stop until you know I, I am good with money. So yeah, that's that that's been a bit of my experience around the the money journey. Wow, that's amazing. So some people might be watching this and going, well, okay, you know, it's affirmations and so on, but what are sort of two or three tangible tips that, that people could get away from? Is it, is it standing in front of the mirror in the bathroom every morning going, you know, I'm going to achieve this the sort of visualization or is, is, is there a bit more to it? Yeah, so a couple of things. Uh, the first is to keep it real. If you're lying to yourself, uh, then it's not going to stick. So that, that, that would be the, the first point. The second is I've actually found journaling as a tool really helpful. Um, getting uh, some of the deeper stuff out, um, how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, if there's something going on in my life, especially around money, um, 
you know, it's it's a lot easier to get that out, um, you know, through through a pen on page than just kind of thinking about it and processing it internally. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll often start with, you know, uh, how I feel is, and then I'll just keep writing. Um, and that will download a lot of the internal stuff uh, that's, that's yeah. yeah. That's really interesting because I, I don't journal. I'm very bad at all of that stuff. But the only time I do it is when I'm long distance hiking. And, and you know, when I, I, I might be hiking for, you know, six weeks just with a, with a pack on and walking. And I do a very similar thing because I, I do video blogs along the way. And it's like I'm confessing to the camera, you know, about, you what, about what's going on. Uh, you know, really what I'm feeling, what I'm hoping to achieve, those sort of things. So that's kind of journaling, isn't it? I, I, I get it now the way you explain it. It is. And it almost doesn't matter what format it takes, you know, mm. as long as you're, you're taking those internal thoughts and feelings and, and, and downloading those externally, it, it gets it, you know, I guess, out of, out of you, uh, especially if, if it's negative. Um, and then you can start to focus on what is going to be positive and supportive and that sort of thing. And that, that's the second part of the, the journaling that I have done is great. Okay. Well, what are the top 50 or 100 reasons why having and keeping money is good for me, is good for my family, is good for, you know, my, my world and, the, and those I'm able to help. Uh, and so that starts cementing why it's actually good uh, to have money and starts replacing those old beliefs with the the new more positive more supportive mm. beliefs which it took me a lot of money and i've i've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching and trainings and all sorts <laughs> you, of things you a lot. And me both. <laughs> yes a lot hasn't worked but uh, yeah. yeah there's that like essentially if i can condense it down into those into those mm couple of simple things uh you know anyone can apply them and they're so simple but they have to be done consistently you you don't get a you don't get to reprogram yourself in just one session of journaling you do need to do it you know every day um and, and i still do it now um, and I, I find it extremely useful uh so yeah if, if you are looking for uh, a i guess a change i really believe that it comes from your identity and in order to change your identity you need to i, I guess uh, first of all, recognize where you are, where you're at, uh, and then make those steps to focus on who you'd like to become. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. I, I, just while you're speaking there, I'm thinking, you know, something a lot of people might've heard of also is imposter syndrome, which, which a lot of business owners and particularly startup business owners get. It's kind of linked, isn't it? it I mean, that's, that's a key element of, of the mindset where people think they're not worthy of being successful and not worthy of, of being wealthy. Absolutely. And look, a lot of imposter syndrome, at least what I've experienced in my life, has come from lying to myself. You know, mm. I am good at this when I'm not, or, you know, I, I am great with money when I'm clearly not, or I am this when I'm clearly not. And so the less of that I do, when I, I am in situations like in a sales presentation in, you know, a new, a new industry that I don't know much about or whatever it is. And you do, you know, like, cause there, there are times on the entrepreneurial journey when you do need to fake it till you make it, I suppose, mm. but you obviously want to limit those. Um, obviously putting your best foot forward is always helpful and that kind of thing, but yeah, making sure that, you know, you're not consistently lying to yourself because mm. that will, I guess, destroy your, your internal self-worth and your internal value and, and uh, your view of yourself. So yeah, it's, it's very much a case of, you know, only stepping into that fake, fake it till you make it when you have to and realize that, you know, it is a season and look out, you know, I am going to put my, my best foot forward here, uh, but not, not, I guess, living in that, uh, which I can, I can say that I did for a, for a long time, you know, I had, you know, the cars or the house mm. or the, you know, whatever it is, you know, there was a lot of debt behind that. There was a lot of stuff, you know, and it was, We've all it was been there. <laughs> mm, absolutely. So I, I guess I'm getting raw, I guess I'm, you know, I'm getting real, but um, yeah, like what, what I found is being authentic and being genuine. You just, can draw so much more happiness from that and be, being happy with where you're at right now rather than having the stuff to impress the people uh, which is yeah. ultim ultimately empty ultimately like a big void yeah. that's true and and you know whilst we're talking about sort of mindset here and, and the words that are coming to mind for me are money mindset you know and, and a lot of people kind of particularly new entrepreneurs feel very uncomfortable about the money side of things you know and oh, I'm, am i appearing greedy and all that kind of stuff you know, I, I think it's a question of getting real, you know, no, nobody's telling you you have to make lots of money and spend it all on yourself. 
you know. Um, a lot of the money I make in my businesses doesn't go on me at all. <laughs> it goes to charities and all kinds of things. So uh, I think you mentioned, you know, right at the beginning there that, um, you know, earning well can kind of improve the world around you as well. So, you know, that's a bit of a mindset issue too. Yeah. And uh, someone said to me uh, fairly early on, but I didn't get it until much later. Mm. Uh, if you have a lot of resources, you can do a lot of good. Absolutely. And, and so it doesn't necessarily have to be on your own car, on your own boat, on your own house, you know, that, that kind of thing. Buy someone but, else a car. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Some, someone who needs it, you know, someone who, you know, yeah. people who, who can't feed themselves and, and that there's plenty of those in, in, you know, pick any third world country mm. in the world. You know, yeah. that there's a lot of good that can be done if you're in a position of, okay wealth uh, and are able to help others yeah absolutely okay now i'll, I'll give you a pause for breath because i'm going to ask you for one really great tip money uh, mindset tip or a resource that we can share below or something uh, because we've talked about quite a bit there and people might be a little bit confused so number one tip that that people could actually do right now what would it be pick up a pen and paper and start journaling journal out your negative thoughts and journal in where you want to be around money. Uh, and if you do that consistently, you will end up where you want to end up around your own finances. Sounds good. So thank you very much for joining us, Ryan. Uh, people might want to sort of reach out to you and learn a little bit more about what you do. We really haven't talked about that because you run a company called Algonics. Maybe we'll put a link down below to uh, you know your LinkedIn profile and your company and things like that as well. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rob. It's been a pleasure.